it's time for your final exam. This is a big, complicated lab. You're going to need to break it down into less complex components in order to complete it. Lab solutions for various components are available in your lab guide, but try not to look at the solution until you've really taken a good try at doing it yourself. So some hints. Write the individual pieces as functions so that you can test them independently and see if they're working right. Get an entire function working before you move on to the next one. Use your lab guide's hints to help guide you. Are you ready? Pause this video and take some time to complete this lab. Use the lab guide included on this disk to guide you through the lab tasks. When you're finished, resume this video and I'll present a sample solution. You'll also find hints and solutions right in your lab guide. This lab uses an Access 2007 database, which you'll find on your disk. You're also welcome to create your own database using an older version of Access, using SQL Server or, or any other database that you might own. Here's the script that makes it all happen. I start by loading the system.data namespace since I'll be working with a database. I then define my get drive inventory function. This is a filtering function designed to accept pipeline input, so it contains a process script block. You should have learned about this type of function in the intermediate course. It assumes that computer names are being piped in and uses WMI to connect to each piped in computer and retrieve the Win32 logical disk class for all local hard disks. For each disk that comes back, it constructs a custom object, another topic from the intermediate course. Each object gets the computer name, drive letter, free space in megabytes, and available space in megabytes. The objects are written to the pipeline and become the output of the function. The next function is write drive inventory, which will save my drive inventory function to a database. This is also a filtering function designed to accept pipeline input. It's designed to accept the custom objects which were output by the first function, in fact. The begin script block runs first and sets up my database connection. Be sure to adjust the file path and connection string to match your database. It opens the database and creates a database command. The end script block, which runs after all pipeline input has been processed, closes the database connection. The process script block runs once for each input object. It gets the current date and constructs a SQL query in a string variable. The query is designed to insert a new row into the database, and the values for that row are taken from the objects that were piped into the function. After the query is constructed, the command is executed. This function creates no output. It simply adds rows to the database. Next is the getFileName function, which simply uses read host to get a computer name from the command line. It returns that computer name as the output of the function. Finally comes the main body of the script. I start by getting a file name. This is meant to be a text file of computer names, listing one computer name per line. I use get content to read in those names and pipe them to drive inventory. That produces my custom drive inventory objects, which are piped to write drive inventory, which writes that information to the database. That's task one. For task two, I do the same thing, but instead write the drive inventory to a CSV file instead of to the database. Moving from task one to task two required no extra work on my part because I designed all of my functions to work with objects. That lets me leverage built-in PowerShell commandlets such as export CSV. Finally, for task three, those same drive inventory objects are piped to format table. I've selected specific properties of those objects to be displayed and created a custom column that calculates the percentage of free space. This is a complex script but it's a very real-world example of how PowerShell should be used. By encapsulating the main functionality into functions that work with objects, I've made it easy to reuse that functionality in a variety of ways, to update a database, to create a CSV file, or to create an on-screen table that included calculated columns.